In this video, I'll show you how to create this washing machine card in Home Assistant. I have previously showed a different way to do something similar, but I think this method is better and more robust. For this tutorial, I will be using Button Card. You will of course need a washing machine integrated in Home Assistant. My washer has sensors that gives me info about remaining washing time and what washing program is running. If you don't have those sensors, you can still follow the tutorial, but you might have to adapt it to your situation. I'm going to start by adding a button card to our dashboard. Then I add my washing machine as an entity. I first like to add all the elements that will be in the card. For this I add a name and a few custom fields. I name them program and stat1, 2, and 3. Stat1 is just a static text element. Stat2 and 3 will be the remaining time and the initial time of the washing. You can see here in the attributes I have available that it is pretty simple for me to add these values to the card. I understand that not everyone will have these attributes, so there might be harder for some people to create exactly the same card as I show. Although I understand that you might want to create exactly the same stuff I do, I would also like to say that I think you should use these videos as inspiration and try to create something that works for your own setup. We can add the attributes to the custom fields by using a simple Java code. Entity.attributes here is a reference to the attributes of the entity we added at the top. The program custom field is pretty much the same, Except for this, I add two attributes into the same custom field. Let's start laying out the card properly. At the moment, everything is just stacked on top of each other. For this card, I will style the card, the grid, the name, icon, IMG cell, and all the custom fields. One custom field I didn't add earlier is the bar visualizing the time left. So let's just add it now and fix the code for it later. The card will just get 20px padding. I then create a grid with two columns and four rows. In the first row I add the icon and the program custom field. The second row will be the name and stat2, which is the remaining time. The third row will be the bar, and the fourth row will be the last two stat custom fields. You can see that the layout looks slightly better now. I then just define the size of each grid cell using the grid template columns and rows code. Okay, then I'm going to show how I have created the moving bar. Remember I had those two initial and remaining time attributes that I added earlier? What I want to do is convert those time attributes into a percentage number, meaning when remaining time is equal to initial time, the percentage should be 100, and when remaining time is zero, the percentage should also be zero. As I said before, not everyone will have these exact same attributes available. It's very hard to create custom cards that will work for everyone. If you don't have these values, there might be other things you can do like creating a timer helper that starts with the washing machine, and you could then calculate the difference between the start time and the timer. I'm not a Jinja expert, but this is what I have come up with. I'll put this in the description so you can just get it from there. It basically converts hours, minutes, and seconds of both the start and remaining time into minutes. It then calculates the difference, and with some multiplications, I end up with a number between 0 and 100. To add this template sensor to the card as a bar, I will create a div inside the custom field. A div is basically just a HTML element that we can style using CSS. First I add a blue background, and I set height to 12px. Lastly I set the width to be the state of that template sensor. It's important to add a percentage sign after the sensor. Okay. Now that we finally have all the elements ready and laid out correctly with a grid, we can style it all. Most of these are all going to have the same kind of styling, just different font sizes and weights. I use Justify Self to move elements left or right inside its cell. I set Justify Self to end on all the elements in the second column. The only element except for the icon that is a bit different is the bar. It should be 100% wide, have a border radius and a background color. I also set the height to 12px. Then I just add the same CSS rules to the other elements. 16px is my main font size, and I use 10px for those tiny text elements at the bottom. They aren't really that important. You may have noticed that I've added some negative margins and paddings here and there. I remove those again, because I found a nicer and cleaner way to position elements correctly. The icon is similar. The icon in button card is actually split over two elements. The IMG cell is the wrapper of the icon, and the icon is the actual icon. So if you, for example, want to add a background color around the icon, you add that to the IMG cell. But if you want to change the color of the icon, you do that in the icon element. Here I just change the size and move it to the left. Now it's starting to look like something. 
The trick now is to just adjust the grid row sizes to give all the elements a bit more space. The card looks nice when the washing machine is on and is cleaning, but it doesn't really make sense while the washing machine is off. So I want to add some conditional rules to the card so that it just displays a message when the machine isn't running. To do that, we can use the state rule with a value of off. I first set show label to true. Then I just set label to turned off. Show label actually has to be outside of the state rules. Then I want to give special styling for the grid and all the custom fields in the off state. A neat trick is that you can hide elements by setting display to none. So I'm going to do that for all the custom fields. You can test and debug by overwriting the state value in the developer tools. Since we are hiding elements, we can also simplify the grid in this state. The grid template areas will now just be I, N, and L. I first do three columns here, but you actually only need one column and three rows. I also add some basic styling for the label, same as all the other text elements. It's a bit squished together, so I copy the grid rows sizes from the main styling and set the last row to 1FR. I also then realize my mistake and remove the last two columns, and that is starting to look a lot nicer. The very last thing I want to do then is set a fixed height for the whole card. That way the height stays the same when the washer is both on and off. One thing I've started to do recently in my dashboard is to color the cards with a gradient when devices are turned on. We can do that by adding a CSS gradient to the card styling. I use CSS gradient.io to create gradients, then I can just paste the code into Home Assistant. When adding a gradient like this, we should probably change the colors of the bar as well. When doing this, it's a good idea to also edit the background and text colors for the off state. The last thing I want to show is how I've added a remote start that waits for the next period of cheap electricity. I use a hacks integration called Nord Pool Planner that creates a sensor that triggers when today's cheapest period starts. In the washing machine card, I create a hold action that triggers an automation. It first shows a confirmation pop-up that tells me when the next period of cheap electricity is, and it asks me if I want the washer to start at that time. To do this, I've just used the confirmation function inside button card. The automation is very simple. It just waits for a template to become true. When it's true, it triggers the remote start. All right, that's enough for this video. It turned into a long one. Hope you learned something and let me know in the comments if you wonder about anything. As always, the full code can be found on the Gumroad link. Thanks for watching and take care.